I think that there is a, a particular hunger uh, for creativity in Africa, and we see it actually in the broad expanse of the arts, so in the music, in, in the visual arts, but also in the uh, narrative arts, in fiction, in memoir, in poetry, and drama. So I think that the future is very good. Okay, um, just um, briefly about uh, this recent trailing of um, Prophet Awaye Shoyinka in, on um, the internet when he spoke about giving up his um, residency in America if Trump should win. Um, what do you really think about the reaction of the people towards um, Prophet Awaye Shoyinka? I think it's really silly. Uh, Shoyinka, all of us, all of us have the right to make statements and to det- to decide whether we carry through with what we say we're going to do. Uh, people speak in different kinds of forms. There is uh, an expression uh, th- that is metaphorical. Uh, there's an expression that is, uh, you know, a way of hoping that a particular outcome will not be true. So the fact that a man says, um, if, if Trump won, he was going to tear up his green card, A, it doesn't mean that we uh, have the right to then hold him to tearing up his green card. Uh, there are a lot of Americans who said they will leave America if Trump uh, uh, won the election. Uh, nobody is, uh, well, some people are harassing them to leave, but it's really silly. It's, it's, there are so many diff- more important problems in the world than people harassing Willis Shoyinka over whether he's uh, carried out uh, what he said he might do if, if, if Trump won. Um, I read your article um, some time ago, I think in 2014, um, when you spoke about um, President Jonathan then not being aware that there are poor people in Nigeria. Yeah. What do you think of this present administration? I think it's a continuation of the same narrative. I think that as a rule, those who govern Nigeria are so disconnected from the lives of ordinary Nigerians, and which is part of the tragedy of the country, uh, that once they get there, they are surrounded by this uh, retinue of uh, profiteers from the misery in Nigeria. And these profiteers tell them that you are the best president ever created, uh, to ever occupy the office of president in in anywhere in the world. And so after a while, when uh, the presidents begin to believe this narrative, they begin to think that there is actually truth. To it, and that they, they that they are wonderful uh, visionary leaders when they are simply mediocrities. Okay, talking about this present administration and the president's fight against corruption, how would you um, assess the techniques or tactics you so far? Uh, I have written very critically of President Buhari's uh, uh, so-called war on corruption. Buhari yes. has not. Um, pronounced what his anti-corruption philosophy is and has not decided on the set of tools to prosecute that war. Buhari is repeating the same things that Obasanjo did, that Yaradua did, that Jonathan did. Uh, That's an ineffective and ineffectual way to fight corruption. Um, uh, And so my hope is that uh, the advisors of the president will sit him down and say, look, let's even have um, in a fresh new approach. Okay? So to go and arrest seven or nine judges in a judiciary that is beset on a deep, profound level by corruption is it, simply drama. You know? So people clap for that kind of drama, but it goes nowhere. Remember that there are Nigerian politicians whose trials by the EFCC have been going on since 2007, okay? And there are still the cases still in court. And, you know, so it, it, it's a joke, really. It's a joke. Uh, in what state elections? On those states. Well, it is, again, part of the larger Nigerian narrative. Power in Nigeria is captured, not given. And power is captured by different factions of the ruling elite, the political elite. And that political elite is increasingly the least enlightened uh, part of the, uh, of, of the population of the country. So they corner power for self-enrichment. 
and so the 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 able to, the, the the kill, the rig, the bribe, they do everything because they know that once you are ensconced in 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 office, that the Nigerian political office just enables you to steal as much public resources as you as you want, um, and so once that is the mode, people will continue to bring desperation to. To the quest for political office, and that's what we're seeing in Ondo State today. Okay, I'm um, still talking about um, politics in Nigeria. Um, recently, it was in the news that um, the Delta State um, Speaker um, was threatened of um, impeachment. What do you think about that? I'm indifferent to it. It doesn't improve the lives of anybody if the man were impeached, nor does it improve the lives of anybody if he wasn't impeached. It's just one of that those internal games that the people who destroy the lives of their citizens or the residents engaging. It's a fact, it's, a, it's the, that struggle that I talk about over which faction of the ruling political elite is going to steal our funds. So if they remove the man and put in another speaker, that speaker is going to be involved in this uh, self-aggrandizement and self-enrichment. Okay? So it's part of a game. What we need is to define a country where citizens, citizens determine the outcome of what happens in the country and also where there is a system of laws okay so that when the if a president is found to have committed a crime the president pays a price in nigeria even if you're a local government chairman the police will not arrest you unless somebody the governor tells them to go and arrest you or the president you know it's it's silly you know, we have to have a country, as happens elsewhere in the world, where if a police, police officer sees an, a former head of state committing a crime, any police officer can arrest him and he will be prosecuted. But that doesn't happen in Nigeria. So I keep saying that Nigeria, as currently organized, is for the benefit of its worst elements, the thieves among us. On um, citizens and um, the law, recently there was a video of... Um a child being more. Oh, yeah. Well, we have dehumanized ourselves to the point where we actually, a lot of our people who are the victims of, of political power, come out and defend those who are destroying the country. Okay? But then, if a child who is hungry steals Gary to eat because he's hungry, they say we can't forgive this, they lynched a the child in the most brutal way. So it says something about the kind of society we've become and how self hating we've become. What's your opinion about jungle justice? I mean, people believe jungle justice is always wrong. Okay, and that's why I talk about a system of laws. We must have a system of laws that doesn't respect anybody, whatever your status. It respects only those who haven't committed crimes. If you commit a crime and you are a serving head of state, a serving governor, an ex-head of state, you should be held accountable. Okay? So, if we have that system, then citizens will believe that there is something that protects them. So, what we have now is the syndrome of the big man or the big woman, which is part of why if, if you criticize a governor, people from his home area or from his particular ethnicity will come out and defend him, even though he, they are also the victims of what the governor is doing to everybody. Okay? And so on and so forth. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.